Schizoanalysis is a constructivist method which aims to comprehend how the real is to be constituted as linked territory through the machinic modulation of fluxes in regard to virtual universes of reference. The unrepresentable and virtual singularities. It aims to rediscover a transcendental unconscious as transcendental immanence. This transcendental field constitutes the real of virtual singularities or the universe of virtual, non representable reference. Following this, according to Deleuze and Guattari, the real is, quote, the result of the passive synthesis of desires out of the production of the unconscious, unquote. The meta model created by them functions as a device in analyzing the assemblages of the constituted territories as real or how virtual singularities of an assemblage such as a group of people and their desire in outer production may conjunct new lines of flight or be territorializing the reframes of subjugation. In the process of schizoanalysis, heterogeneous machinic assemblies between abstract and concrete machines which cut the fluxes may be able to discover an unprecedented chaosmic and virtual universal references. This, in turn, may produce a transformation of the lived territory of a group or in terms of neoliberal newspeak, there are some innovations actualizing in the place. However, the virtual singularities are non-representable and pre individual which produce an unthinkable exteriority, plane of immanence where no given relation may be held. This plane of immanence of the virtual singularities is the full body of Earth or the absolute deterioration, and in this sense may not be dismantled in signification, but remains to be virtual. I have named the present socio-economic and political context as immanent capitalism. It is a curious paradox, since how come capitalism would be something immanent? Is it absolute capitalism that has captured the life, a concept not for something but only to itself, complete biopower? According to the re reading of immanence by Deleuze, a life is a process of actualization of virtues, where they are given particular reality, but the virtual singularities are not conflated with the reality. Then, should I rather define capitalism as transcendent, where, quote, subject is produced at the same time as its objects, unquote. To be specific, capitalism as we experience it now adheres with the plane of immanence, the full body of earth or the absolute exteriority, and it would be a misconception to confirm capitalism explicitly as immanent, but my, my point at this stage is to declare that it functions as immanent, as transcendent, asymptified, smooth rather than striety, a mixture and not a melange. Thus, in this context, the production within is based on processes, collaboration, innovation, cooperation and intersubjectivity, which in turn is desiring out of production. New territories of material, affective, emotional, cognitive, signifying, and discursive arrangements are produced following the same logic as in the machinic constructivism presented by Deleuze and Guattari in schizoanalysis. In the context of immaterial labor, including artistic practice, a subject has a function of a group or an arrangement which has aims to facilitate actualization of the potentialities through these constructions. Gary Genosko argues for the importance of transversal mobility between territories, creative lines of flight, and the self-engendering of the production in our context. It is through transversal means that a subject as a group may be able to recreate oneself while being mobile between new territories. In this context, transversality is a decisional tool for the possession of such activity in order to actualize new territories and not only interpretive reflections. Subject as a function in the groups is out of production instead of conscious assessment or reflection. It struggles with the processual lines of flight and the subjugated reframes. This processuality, namely in the context of immanent capitalism, is constantly interrupted, blocked, and faced with resistance. The process actualizes into representation and relations. A life transcends itself into a world. Process, collaboration, innovation, and cooperation also produce resistance, which is inseparable from the synthesis. Thus, regulation, calibration, compatibilization are needed in this assemblage. Even in capitalism serves as the exteriority for these processes, which are explicitly decisional thought forms, that is to say, transcending operations of deduction, analysis, aesthetics or reflection, which are needed in the process of articulating the world, the world of capitalism. 
A proposition for artistic practice in my dissertation departs from the apparatus of schizoanalysis towards a certain type of heretical or indifferent practice, following a non-standard thought articulated by François Larouel. I perceive schizoanalysis as a system where functions, differences and positions have the ultimate role. To this, my proposition postulates absolute indifference. It is a proposition not of reflexive agonism, but indifferent revolt as a struggle. This practice is indifferent agonism, but it is speculative and theoretical, and in this such, a heresy is towards knowing, gnosis instead of knowledge production. Notwithstanding the significance of schizoanalysis in relation with capitalist apparatus, my proposition aims to articulate the difficulty of a systemic apparatus in relation with a practice without a foundation. Therefore, the concept of immanence needs to be regarded differently as well. How can we have a practice based on indifference to processuality, relationality or hegemony? The relation between the inside and outside hegemony or sect, which are irrelevant from this speculative perspective. There are no revolutions or exodus waiting for heretical practice. It is a practice without a faith, formative alongside the real. The imminent capitalism does not recognize such heresy, but signifies it as sectarianism, as agonistic position. All practices not founded on such a sufficient reason are deemed to be buried in history and dragged over coals. Such a heretical practice without a reason, a speculative practice, has no departure or progress. It has no system in itself. However, the position of an outsider practice would deem it immediately to a sectarian position against the hegemony. Thus, such a practice ought to recognize the system where it is in, not as the real, but as a world production of capitalism and capital form of thought, philosophy. Such practice is therefore accepting these transcending operations of decision, deduction, analytic, dialectic, aesthetic, appearance, reflection, among many others. Philosophizing is an operation of decision, argues François Laruel. More profoundly transcendental indicates a method. The reflective operations produce the world, which, which is an actualization of sufficient reason. reason. Artistic practice is an operation of decision also. Its practice, practice takes place not in the real, but in the world of sufficient reason. Therefore, performance are is bound with these operations. Capital form of thought, philosophy, and turns, and turns into performance, performance of capital form of thought itself. And turns into performance of capital form of thought itself. These decisional forms of practice are the same deduction, analysis, or aesthetic, affective, or reflective operations. The practice, the practice as, as a form of thought operates, operates through socio-political social, commentary, bodily affective and spatial-temporal explorations. They are operations of actualizing the world on sufficient reason. However, the real does not conflate with the world. It is not being actualized in the world. A body does not conflate with the sufficient reason of the given world. This body is an unprecedented mass, a void which does not perform liveness, but maybe only, maybe only in liveness, a non-representational non and asignified body, indifferent to the operations of liveness, but still a performance and an event, not with the body, but alongside this unprecedented body. Right. It is a reflection, analysis, analysis and, and other decisional operations which function for the artistic practice as form of thought to regard, regard the real, and in the cases of paper, a, a body. body. It is, it is a body, body which performs our interprets and, and operates through decisions in given conditions. This is not an ontological inquiry what is or what is being in performance are, but to inquire its operations of interpretation, modulation and other transcending operations which create a world of sufficient reason. 
The production based on cooperation, philosophizing is an operation of decision. Alongside these operations, the body or the radical immanence, indifferent with them, is void of content, whereas the world is the discursivity itself, writes Katarina Kolosova. Quote, the term the world is used in a sense analogous to the notion of discursiveness, the language, the transcendental or the conceptual world of a society and time, end quote. These operations have an ambition, ambition towards this void, which however remains indifferent to it. So in the world of sufficient reason, it is by proxy as equally or as its body. It needs to be distinguished from the immanence sought by the words of what really where, where immanence realizes, realizes itself in the subject, or where, where the virtual intensity actualizes itself in the real. Both virtual and actual are infinitely mixed in the plane of immanence. Both virtual and actual are infinitely mixed in the plane of immanence. Ray Grassier writes that, quote, it is not the philosopher qua subject who thinks the real, it is the real which singular singularizes itself as an impersonal event of thought, to which the philosopher is merely accessory. What is construction what? immanence is the unrepresentable, unthinkable, and absolute exteriority. Quote, an absolute transcendental residue of the reduction of transcendence is a residue that is nothing independent, independently of the operation. Immanence or the real functions as, as an absolute, absolute limit. limit. However, in the, in the argument of Laruel, this, this happens to be so when Immanence is positive as immanent in a gesture of thought. Immanence is positive as immanent in a gesture of thought, which gives rise, which gives rise to an image of the real through philosophical decision. This is leading to a radically immanent and foreclosed real without a concept, and thus asking for a radical question how do thinking or practice may operate according to the foreclosure of the real? How to, operate, how to operate according to matter and, and the materialism of a body. To imminent foreclosure of a body. is that I am too much of a middle-sized object, a function, and not enough matter. I do perceive the complexity of virtual actual mix in schizoanalysis, but in practice it has fallen short. Then how can I become a body according to the radical foreclosure of the real, and not as an unconscious immanence? How to postulate a practice according to unprecedented foreclosure? Where is the practice which would have any place to regard this radical immanence as such that, in words of Quetimel Su, it brings forth a virtuality which did not pre-exist in any it way, brings in any totality inaccessible to time its own advent. A virtuality which did not pre-exist in any way, in any totality inaccessible to time its own advent. How to perceive the form as, as an advent? As an advent? And what has an event? event. The event, event of individuation makes a virtual and actual smooth society. If I can look at that, that mark my argument that at least the question, question of practice ought to be articulated along the lines of this distance from being the other or the becomings. In the end, it is the question of sufficient reason, the character form of thought entwined with the practice, which is being called in the present year. I may regard the, the principles following this reason behind the event, but I remain foreclosed by these gestures of thought. The transcending reason is incapable of providing me anything about the foreclosed real or the matter of my body also. However, following the argument by Nea Su, there is no reason for the world or its thoughts to remain as they are, and there is a question emerging for practice to regard itself after the game is over. But even, even so, so, what follows is the real request for artistic practices, not the search for actualization of our potential. potential. This declaration did lead to regard our practices aside from the economy of your science and this high reduction, which were the fundamental sports analysis. 
It is a way to way to our drug is not in this world, but in the infantry and its enemies, where, following our life, the determination in the last instance is no longer considered to be economy, but this radical imminence of the foreclosed real economy, but this radical imminence of the foreclosed real. I can speculate on practice, I can speculate on advent in different to my thoughts, which is speculations and other transcendental decisions. Speculations and other transcendent for humans, the middle size objects, or metaphysical the middle sized objects or metaphysical entities. A practice without a faith, a practice without a faith, and any illusions, and any illusions, or hallucinations of or hallucinations or hallucinations of the real. In this way, the practice is not practice is not standard. And only matter, aside Generally. from the fact that there is always a human aside thing from the fact that there is always this practice a which would be an advent to thought, this practice and which would be an advent to thought and indifference. That is to say, it is not collaborative or that relational. Is to say, it is rather, not collaborative it is or relational, relational but rather where it is a unilateral relation right. where the matter and radical impermanence are indifferent to us and my thoughts and actions. Does not ah, exist in the real. Exist in the real. May perform, may perform the real. according to the real. The real is foreclosed. The real is foreclosed. The real is foreclosed. And collaborations is and collaborations inevitably. While I inevitably do produce these operations are speculations. These operations are speculations in the world. Capitalism creates conditions where sects and orthodoxy contest each other. In respect of orthodoxy contest each other. In respect of orthodoxy contest and multiplication of sex. Because it is in itself the transcendental unification of all. Capitalism is always sufficient capitalism. Capitalism is always sufficient capitalism constitutes the world and makes everything material for valorization. Including dissident cells and fundamentalists. Including this as long as we believe that there is a reason why things are as they are. We will continue to maintain as they are. There is an ineffable reason underlying all things. There is an ineffable reason underlying all things. Since we will never be able to understand the reason, all we can do is discover or understand the reason. All we can do is believe in it. As far as we believe in it, this is the case of imminent capitalism or capitalist transcendental philosophy. And it, and it is the case of the critical art practices, art practices well. as well. It is practice, it is practice which, which will produce practice nothing to be secured by history. I think about, I think this, about this body, I speculate, I speculate and I hallucinate. And I hallucinate. Yeah. Yeah. And I, hallucinate. I, I create systems and axioms. Hallucinations of, of, of symbolic of body are of operations of philosophy and art. Thinking is a system, is a system and a malignant transcendental growth of the body, where subjectivity is a parasite of the indifference of the body. The body artist has a body with transcendental and malign growth as being planning, blood phase, psychosis, assimilation with devouring space, black holes, or a body without them. They are transcendental figures of a body. They are transcendental attempts to correlate with the body. It is a postulation without sufficient reason. A provocation in the last instance is an inconsistent body as a void. The lonely hour of heresy which never comes. I consume this carnal meal, scribed on the surface of it, and impose cuts, bruises, knots, and enmeshed conjunctions. The heresy is that I do not inhabit my body, but I am being lived by this indifferent carnality, this advent of a body. I do not articulate anything about the real. I seek no miracles or affirmations of beatitude. I am to create conditions for the unprecedented without a reason or territory. I am not fundamentalist, orthodox, liberal or formalist. I hallucinate a monster, the becoming, desire of a potentially monstrous otherness, the monster of demos and of multitude. Not as a beast, but as a zombie between being and non-being. I hallucinate a monster of the unprecedented future. My hallucination is capitalism. My orthodoxy is capitalism. I am not a monster. I am a stranger. I am an idiot. I am not a multitude. I am not demos. I am not a citizen. I am not essence. I am not the other. I am one. I am generic, I am indifferent. 
Nothing is true. Nothing is possible. There is nothing potential. There are no innovations. There are no solutions. I know that I hallucinate. Non-thinking of death. Nothing but precisely sitting and non-thinking of an unprecedented death. Non-thinking of the generic death. The death of one. Not the death of being. Not the death of the other. I suffer from the hallucination of an infinite potentiality. I suffer by expressing it in front of grand patricians. We the miners, we the moleculars, we the poor, we the artists, we the alienated, we the multitude, we the exploited, we the delirious. I have a problem with dialogue and with relation, but men of the system help guide me back on the track of hallucination. The real for the subject as becoming is but a hallucination of reality, a sufficient reason for the real. The real for the subject as stranger is a fiction of a world indifferent to the stranger, indifferent and without sufficient reason. Heretical axiom, a performance without sufficient reason, not for collaboration or cooperation. A performance, not a crusade, but a performance without sufficient reason. A performance is not a verb, nor descriptive of the actions of the brethren of deception. A performance not for humanity, but for man. Everything is real, everything thinks, no thing exists. The performance artist is foreclosed from the body, which is cut, bruised, broken, scarred, infested, twisted, worn, sewn, pierced, punctured, operated, zacky, loose, flappy. Me is my body, the sensual and worldly flesh of Carmel. I have unthinkable flesh and blood and meat. Meat is my body, the vessel and unthinkable one. Meat is my body, the specter or ghost of one, the evasive substance. Meat is my body, given without givenness, without a relation to how meat gives itself to me. Meat is my body, illuminated until the end of time. Meat is my body, a produce, generic goods of one body. Arrest the hard flexing, posing, tight body. Occupy the soft interior, mesmerizing, lax body. Enthrall the immobile, vertical, positioned, inflated, void body. Bewitch the interior, obscene, luscious body. Revet the spilled, drooped, curved, diluted, illuminated, modulated, distilled body. Catch the tense, limit, verged, falling, hard, stress, encountered body. Size the implicit requirement to perform and to record and to consume and to excel body. Bust the jarring levitation and vulnerable addiction body. The body is out of bounds, contrary to delimiting axioms. I was not able to stand up from the floor. I was unable. I was not authentic. I did not know my body. I did not have reflection of my generic body. I worked my needles, I worked for a stitch of consistency. I mended the quilting point, I needed to be assured. Game is over, this is a point. This is a point that gathers dust. This is a point that gathers dust, a stylus on a long playing record. This is a point that gathers dust, a stylus on a long playing record that gathers dust on the grooves of a vinyl record. This is a point that gathers dust, a stylus on a long playing record, that gathers dust on the groove of a vinyl record, an album veering into obscurity. This is a point that gathers dust, a stylus on a long playing record, that gathers dust on the grooves of a vinyl record, an album veering into obscurity from a blank tablet. This is a point that gathers dust, a stylus on a long playing record, that gathers dust on the grooves of a vinyl record, an album bearing into obscurity from a blank tablet to the unprecedented nothing. This is a point. The practice of one generic monologue begins here. The practice of being alongside the real. The practice of how to resist without a reason. How to produce indifference to the orthodoxy of capitalism. The practice of being alone. The practice of solitude. When there is only relation without relation to the radical and indifferent immanence of the real. The practice of solitude which takes place in the humdrum of the world. The practice which is not isolation. The practice which is not an answer.
Thank you. Somehow, well, I don't know if I can, if it's too much of an interpretation, but it's, it's the kind of speech. I was thinking of, well, obviously it relates to the projects of Lydia Clark in Brazil when she was doing this uh, anthropophagida projects with people are vomiting schools of thread on bodies. And also I was thinking of actually the the performance piece by Carla Schneeman, where she's pulling the text out of the vagina. Yeah. So in that sense of the speech, something to refer. And then I was thinking, what is the material first, the black thread, but then it seemed too obvious, and I kind of prefer that it's uh, kind of invisible, so that what happens, I don't know, but I, I actually was thinking that what happens is that my gesture has become kind of odd. I'm doing something, but you actually maybe don't, in, especially in dimmer light, you maybe you would not perceive that I have some material in. So it gets this kind of. So. But also relating a little bit, little bit with this that the sound is going like a spiral in the actual plate. Uh, spiraling out of my mouth. Yeah. It relates to the spoken text. Yeah. In a in a sense you yeah. are exposing something yeah. uh, in a different gestural way. Yeah. yeah. Matter instead of again matter instead of words. <coughs> Actually there is a sort of uh, visual and kind of correspondence between at least imagined mm -hmm. between that kind of wire and the mm -hmm. group of yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's more it's like And also the thought how it goes with Clark that if their group practices, so there's lots of people looking for one person. 
was lying on the ground. So in that sense, I want a little bit to include. And it's a, it's a perfect place because it's around. So. Yeah. Uh, what you mentioned about the, the archival sound made me think of uh, memory and the fact that maybe with the repetition there is also inevitably some distortion happening. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was just wondering if that was something you thought about? Or, yeah, or? yeah. And also the kind of the best triple. Yeah. Like this, and then becomes these things of stutter or the. Or the maybe that's what I like the handleability that much quick. Of course, you see the turntables, you can do the same thing, but somehow there is this sense of. Thing. So in the end, I was a bit the last part, a little bit improvising that what picks up there, but does it need to be repeated, and why it needs to be that then it gets distorted or there goes the track or. Thank you very Thank much. You.